On this episode of China Uncensored, the Chinese regime promised the Philippines that they'd totally give them billions of dollars. How'd that turn out? Hi, welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Rodrigo Duterte, president of the Philippines and Vladimir Putin wannabe. When he ran for office, he was so outspoken against China's territorial claims in the South China Sea that he pledged to stop them with a move even Putin would have admired. He promised to ride a jet ski to disputed islands and plant the Philippines flag. Of course, it would have really impressed Putin if Duterte had pledged to ride the jet ski while shirtless and on a horse. But after taking office in mid-2016, Duterte did a full 180 but not on a jet ski. In fact, he put that jet ski back in the shed to gather dust. In Duterte's first official meeting with Chinese leader Xi Jinping, he didn't even bring up the territorial disputes, even though an international court had just ruled in the Philippines' favor. Duterte even turned his back on longtime ally, the United States, as he jumped into Xi Jinping's loving arms. I announce my separation from the United States. Those the words of Rodrigo Duterte in Beijing on Thursday, capping off a trip to China where he's won a whopping $13 billion in business deals. Duterte saw Chinese investment as key to his build, build, build strategy. He wants to usher in a golden age of infrastructure development through a six-year, $180 billion spending spree. And when the dust settled from Duterte's charm offensive in Beijing, China pledged to provide the Philippines with $24 billion. That would include $15 billion in foreign direct investment plus $9 billion in aid. That aid alone would be 20 times more than what the Philippines got from the United States in 2016. So sure, the U.S. has been an ally of the Philippines for decades, but I mean billions of dollars? For billions of dollars, who wouldn't want to cuddle up with China? But you know what? Sometimes China can be so forgetful. See, when the South China Morning Post did a spot check on China's investment commitments earlier this month, they asked what happened to the billions China pledged the Philippines. And it turns out the answer is not a whole lot. Of its $24 billion pledge, China so far has made good on only $1 billion worth of foreign direct investment. Add to that just a single finalized loan agreement of $73 million. And China gave the Philippines $75 million in direct aid. That was in the form of grants to build two bridges in the capital of Manila. Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Zhao Jianhua, was at the groundbreaking ceremony last month holding a golden shovel alongside other men, also dressed inappropriately for construction. Ambassador Zhao said that the bridge projects will further add strength to the build, build, build initiative of the Philippines. And he tried to assure everybody that China's loans to finance infrastructure projects will not make the Philippines fall into a debt trap. And you know what? I believe him, at least for now, because for the Philippines to fall into a debt trap, China would actually have to lend them lots of money. And so far, that tap's been pretty dry. They've only received less than 5% of what China promised. It's like they ordered a hamburger and then the waiter brought them a shriveled piece of lettuce. Now to be fair, the holdups on the money weren't all from the Chinese Communist Party. As the South China Morning Post points out, some projects were delayed or canceled by the Philippines, and more may be coming soon. Now on the one hand, the slowdown in investment is actually good news for the Philippines. It means they haven't fallen into the Communist Party's debt trap, like Sri Lanka, or Pakistan, or Djibouti, or Laos, or Cambodia, or, well, the list goes on. But on the other hand, in order to get the promise of Chinese aid and investment, even though it's unfulfilled so far, Duterte has already made a lot of concessions that have angered Filipinos. At a February meeting of the Chinese Business Club, Duterte complained that China was pinching its pennies. So, to get China to loosen its purse strings, he joked that China should just annex the Philippines and turn the country into a Chinese province. Why are you so sparing? Gusto ninyo, gawain na lang ninyo kaming province, Fujian, pati Philippine province of China. Di wala tayong problema. 
Wisit. Libre na lahat. Everything will be free? Maybe someone should tell Duterte that's not how communism actually works. Now, while Duterte's jokes seem to make the Chinese ambassador smile, it didn't go over so well with the citizens of the Philippines. A few months later, banners calling the Philippines a province of China started popping up on bridges in Manila. And I've got to give them props. No, I mean, Filipinos are using lots of props to express their anger at Duterte. The Philippines, province of China banners are slightly more subtle than the guy with the China out hat. Or this effigy of the president's head died to a makeshift train, which was then set on fire. That happened on the day of Duterte's State of the Nation address in July, when thousands took to the streets and not exactly to show their support. Meanwhile, Duterte blamed blood-sucking bureaucrats for the lack of money for his infrastructure dream. Corruption is like a leech that it bleds the government of funds, program, press infrastructure, and social development projects. To be fair, People are angry at Duterte for a lot of things. But among those things, he's blamed for making one-sided concessions to China on sovereignty with nothing to show for it in return. And it's not just Duterte's refusal to plant his flag in the South China Sea, which, let's be honest, even I've done that. Duterte also proposed a highly controversial sharing deal with China on a planned joint exploration of resources in a part of the South China Sea that the Philippines claims. Under the agreement, the Philippines would get 60% and China 40%. But critics say this is a bad deal because it solidifies China's claim there. But don't worry, Duterte isn't giving up on enforcing the Philippines' claim to the South China Sea. He's fully committed to imposing it in the year 4001. When he'll ride to the Scarborough Shoal and plant the Philippines' flag on a space jet ski while shirtless and on a horse, a space horse. And before you go, it's time for me to answer another question from a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. David Michael White asks, among your many overseas adventures, which hotel did you like the most? Why, it was the Jia Jia Hotel in Taiwan. They were super friendly and had interesting rooms, and they were in good locations in Taipei and Tainan. Also, I can't say no to a free breakfast. Now, on the one hand, I am saying that because the Jia Jia Hotel was a sponsor of China Uncensored, and I have a lot of love and respect for the companies that support us. But on the other hand, I don't have much to compare it to. The truth is, I don't usually stay in hotels while traveling. China Uncensored doesn't exactly have a big travel budget. For most of our trips, the crew and I save money by staying in people's homes or in Airbnbs. But for all the hotel owners out there watching this episode, if you have a five-star hotel and want to sponsor our crew next time we travel, I'm very open to updating my answer to this question. And for everyone else watching, what do you think about China's investment commitments to the Philippines coming up short? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Remember, China Uncensored is supported mainly through support from viewers like you. If you can, Check out our website, patreon.com slash China Uncensored, and contribute a dollar or more per episode. You'll get some neat perks, and we might answer your question on the next episode.